Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I am Asma Shindi, petroleum engineer graduated from American University of Ras al-Khaima, and I will, I will be your moderator for today. On behalf of BioPetro, Arab Oil and Gas Academy, and SPE Egypt section, I would like to welcome all of you to the third lecture of our short course, Effective Python Programming for Exploration and Production. Also, this lecture is part of our Natural Gas Engineering Internship. The lecture is presented by a special speaker, engineer Johannes Nuara. Before I present our speaker, I would like to remind you, if you have any questions, please drop them in the Q&A box and keep the chat box professional. Now our speaker is Johannes Nuara is now working as a distributed acoustic sensing geophysics in the Wright Institute, Kyoto, Japan. He holds a bachelor in geophysics. He had achieved outstanding achievements in many places. One of them was minus CO2 challenge by Equinor and EAGE in 2018. He had several high rank publications. One of them is about integration of rock physics, time-lapse seismic modeling and geomechanics for CO2 storage, in which he will present in the 82nd EAGE annual conference this October in Amsterdam and Netherlands. He had been working on open source Python programs for geoscience and petroleum engineering since 2020 and had been teaching to more than 1,000 SPE students and professionals worldwide. In his free time, he loves writing blogs and towards data science medium publication involved in his Python for geoengineers community and Telegram, reading biography books and doing sports. So pay attention and welcome Engineer Johannes Nuara. Engineer Johannes, the mic is yours. Thank you, Asma, for your introduction. And hello, everyone. Um, it's been a good day. Um, so today, um, we, are, we are going to discuss another new topic. It's called the Exploration Data Analysis. I hope you uh, you enjoyed um, being in the in the previous two courses on the basics of Python programming and the uh, production data analysis. If you just join in this um, session or this uh, this uh, this lecture, I recommend you to um, watch the recording in the YouTube so you can just follow all of the discussions and the source codes that we uh, just go through. And um, actually, I have the links to, uh, to the source codes that I just shared to you in my previous sessions. Uh, the first session is about basics of Python and the second session about production data analysis. If you are going, if you are interested and you are curious enough to try all of those source codes, here you can access the source codes and one thing I would like to point is that um, if you want to learn Python, you have to practice. If you don't practice at all using this, uh, using the source codes, or you uh, you just you just leave after sessions, you won't learn something because uh, uh, to learn programming it requires a constant practice. And how to um, start your practice? You can follow the codes, and then uh, if you just finish running all, uh, uh, you have to try analyze analyze. Um, what you uh, what you can add to the source codes, how I can improve uh, in my source code and how to make things out from the source code and how to make any other things, just be creative. So here you can you can access the links. After the session, I will uh, I will again share the link. Uh, and the format is actually uh, the same PyoPetro source code tree for this third session. You can access it once we finish our session today. Okay, so um, we are just going through directly to the, to the Google Collab because we are using Google Collab in our previous sessions. Here I have prepared the notebook for you and we will code from scratch, okay? And after the session, I will share this um, notebook to you. Uh, the links so you can you can also run the codes and learn one by one okay and today we are going to talk about exploration data analysis exploration data uh, visualization okay um you uh, you have been already known about um, exploration data 
what types of exploration data that you will come across. Um, um, for example, uh, well log data for formation evaluation. And probably if you are a geophysicist, you may be handling with um, seismic data, 3D seismic data, that's an exploration. And also um, uh, some data that you can visualize the trajectory of the well bore and the fracture data or image data, um, core data and um, um, the data about, um, um, about the lithology that you um, obtain it from the mud logging operation. It's all in the exploration stage. And today we are going to visualize some of this data that is categorized in this exploration stage, which is the well log data and um, um, the trajectory data and natural fracture data, okay? This, this, will, be, uh, this will be going to be um, um, interesting because this is a new topic that I haven't covered in my previous courses in last year. And um, the, the new topic is the natural fracture analysis. You can, uh, you can um, um, implement this source code if you are working in hydraulic fracturing, you are processing natural fractures data, you can use this code to visualize your data, okay? Um, two libraries that I want to um, use right now is the LACIO and MPL StereoNet. If you still remember what we have going through um, um, in the last session, we, uh, we have discussed about um, uh, the use of Seaborn and um, Seaborn and Plotly, I guess, it's to uh, visualize the production data. And today, LACIO and MPL StereoNet are two libraries that you can use to uh, LACIO is for well log data and MPL stereo net for natural fracture data. Okay. Again, the first thing you, uh, you uh, when you start your um, notebook or your Python code, you just, in, um, you just import all of this library. But because LACIO and MPL, MPL stereo net um, is not already available in Google Colab, you have to install it first. Okay. So the way you are doing the installing of these two libraries, you just type pip.install glacio. And another one for the MPL stereo net, okay? And then you just run um, this code and it will install these libraries into your notebook, okay? Why we don't install NumPy, Matplotlib, Pandas, Seaborn, Plotly? Because most of the libraries um, have been already installed in Google Colab. But some libraries, for example, the libraries for our specific things, you have to install it first, okay? But because you are working in Google Colab, you don't have to install the li these libraries into your computer. You just install this um, library without downloading it just by um, 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 doing the pip install LACIO and then you will get the libraries in your Google Colab without you have to download this library, okay? And then I will add another library I have prepared for you. This library I will use for visualizing natural fracture data, okay? So here, uh, this is the URL or, or the web link to access my library. The library is called Fracture, okay? And I would like to um, get this library into my Google Colab, okay? So I can run this. And you will see that this library has been already in this panel, okay? If you double click this, you will see the functions there are two functions in this program. It's called the Steronet and the Rose Diagram, okay? So this one we'll use for um, visualizing the natural fracture data, yeah? And then we just go through our um, usual routine. We import the NumPy, Matplotlib, and Pandas. Oops. The second one is Pandas. Okay, and then the additional libraries 
because we have already installed these two libraries, we are going to import this, okay? Import Lesio and import MPL Steronet, okay? And then we also import the library that we have already um, accessed here. Uh, the program is called Fracture. So we are importing the Fracture program, okay? All right, so after uh, we have done importing, we have here the data, okay? Yesterday we are talking about production data, but today we are going to talk three data, which is the wire line, wire logging, and the trajectory and the fracture data. And you can open this, um, you can open, you can copy this and open in your browser and you will see the data. This is the data. So this is um, this is this is the wireline well log data. You can see it. This this is uh, the last data. Maybe you you haven't you haven't already seen this data before. So this is this is the well log data uh, that um, petrophysicists are working with um, every day. Um, in in petrophysical softwares, they require a certain format that is called a LAS LAS data. So there are lots of formats, for example, CSV, Excel, and the petrophysicists, they have their own special format that is called the LAS. So that's why we are calling our library this LASIO because LAS, it, it stands for LAS, LAS is the format, and IO stands for input and output. Okay, and then this is the trajectory data. You can, um, you can also click this, this link fracture data, you, uh, you will see the data. But now I want to skip uh, uh, seeing the data because you can, you can do it yourself. We you just run this data. And after running this data, you will get this data into your system. Okay. So um, we are going to the first section. We will, uh, we will visualize the VELOC data. Okay. Actually, there are, there are many courses on how to visualize well data. Uh, they, are, they are literally there everywhere. Whenever you are browsing in the internet, you will see how to visualize well data because visualizing well data is really important and it is really, really simple. So maybe um, I will start by discussing about this topic, although you can, uh, you can um, develop it further after you finish this course, because there are lots of lots of courses, there are articles in Medium, you can, you can start reading how to play with Veloc data in Python, okay? So the first thing, um, we are going to read our last data, okay? So we use the LASIO library, and we use this, LASIO.read. We use the read function from the, li from the LASIO library, Okay. And we type the path to our data because here we have already defined the, uh, the link here. It's called um, the well path, okay? The well path. And if you run this, it will read the data into Google Colab, okay? Last year, read dot well path. Okay, so um, I forgot to type a new variable for this. Maybe um, well df because sorry it's well um, well it's okay so well equals lesio dot read okay and then one more important thing when you start working with a last data you have to look at um, the header of the file okay so for example here I show again our data. This is our header here, okay? And this is our content. And each of this column um, is related to this uh, description. For example, the first column is depth and the second column is a lithology caliper, um, um, density correction, DRHO. And this one is the neutron porosity. I, uh, I guess you have already um, understand this. And Ruby is the density, gamma ray, 
And DTC is a comp compressional um, depth time. It's a sonic lock. And this one is the elastic. So this is the VP. If we invert it, invert DTC, we'll, we'll have a VP. And if we invert DTE, we'll have a VS. And this one is a deep resistivity, spontaneous potential, and this is the resistivity, okay? And we are going to find out, uh, assuming we, uh, we cannot see the data, okay? If we, if we cannot see the data, we can, this, uh, we can display all the information in Python, okay? The way we are doing this, we just type well.curves and it will print us all the information in our data. Here, you have the depth, lithology, caliper, all the logs that are, that are present in this data, okay? So this is, uh, this is called the mnemonics. Mnemonics are all the information um, in, in Wallox, what logs we have in our data, okay? And it's, uh, you can also see what units uh, uh, what, uh, what, what are the units that they have here? The density, they have a gram per liter and all the units you can see. And then um, this one is the shape of the data. It's, it's not too important, but uh, the, uh, uh, you, have to, uh, you have to see this, the depth and the meter, okay? And then actually the data is in form of NumPy data, okay? It's a form of array. So if we print the data, well, the data, you will see all the information, all the, all the values are in NumPy. If we are seeing this, it is quite not comfortable to see our data in this format. We always want to see the data into a CSV or Excel or spreadsheet data. So that's why we can convert um, this data into a data frame. So don't forget, we have already discussed about how to make a data frame, how to convert and how to read a spreadsheet in our production data analysis. We have already talked on how to convert into a data frame. So here we again convert this data into a data frame so that we can, we can display it as a table, okay? So there is a question. Uh, can we use pip install for the user defined library fracture? That's a good question, thank you. Um, actually, if you want to use the pip install thing, um, if, you, if, uh, if you go to this, um, uh, to this, to this website, pyp.org, pyp.org is a website where all developers are putting their libraries into this pyp.org. So if the developer or any library has been already featured in this website, you can do the pip install in this, um, in this notebook. But because I haven't uploaded my, uh, my program here into PyP, we cannot do so. So we can, we can, uh, we can just um, import this library using widget. Actually, this, this, um, this library is contained in my GitHub um, maybe some of you uh, followed my um, GitHub already. So I have a GitHub and in this GitHub, uh, you, can, uh, you can see all of my uh, libraries here. It is a quite complete um, um, documentation of my um, repositories. And um, you can go here, my GitHub and formation evaluation. Actually the, um, the the library is inside this repository, okay? So this repository contains all functions you can use for a well log analysis. And this is, this, is my, this is my function here. So from this, so from this um, link, okay? So from this link, I access it directly to, uh, to Google Colab. I hope you understand this because, um, um, uh, some people prefer to use GitHub to store all the libraries, and I have my own GitHub to, to, to store my lots of libraries here, not only for mission evaluation, but if you are also interested in reservoir engineering, I also have them, uh, the libraries. Maybe um, in, in a later session, after this um, discussion, we can, uh, we can discuss it more. Okay, so um, 
uh, we back to our uh, previous discussion here. Uh, we want to convert the well data to a data frame, okay? And how to convert this? Um, we have already defined our uh, data. It's called the well data, okay? And then uh, we use it well dot, uh, uh, dot to df. Sorry, it's um, well df, okay? Okay. But um, you have to add this reset index, okay? So after this, you have already done um, converting all the data into a data frame, and you can see the data in, in a form of a spreadsheet here, okay? And it's more comfortable to see this data right into this form. So we will use this format to uh, through our analysis here, okay? So this is the, uh, uh, still, still uh, I hope you still, for, uh, you still remember our previous discussion. These are our features, okay? Columns are features, and uh, there are 21,000 observations or rows in our data, okay? And the fun thing here, I would like to share how to visualize this data, because the core activity in every petrophysics or formation evaluation activity is how to visualize this data, okay? So before we are going to our part, let me um, share share to you how uh, you have to you have to learn the basics of for looping because in the previous discussions we have we have already discussed about this for looping. So actually, uh, um, for example, we have a list of names here. Um, list, okay, list of name. For example, um, John, Matthew. James, um, Peter, and um, Andrew. That's the name of apostles. And um, again, so in this code, I would like to print each of these names, okay? So John, Matthew, James, Peter, Andrew. I would like to print all of, all of the names. So I use the for looping to print one by one, okay? So you just type for I in, okay. So there are two ways to do this. This is the first way, okay? It is quite important for you to learn the basics of programming because for looping is actually the basic of all programming. If you, if you learn not only Python, but MATLAB, C++, or R, Java, Julia, they will start the discussions from array, for loop, if conditionals, and all of those things. So you have to master these things, okay? So um, a concept that is called the for looping. So we can use the for i in list name, okay? And then print i, and it will print the name one by one here, okay? John, Matthew, James, Peter, Andrew, okay? There is another way to do this. Um, for example, here for I in, we use range learn list name, okay? Maybe for some of you, it's still, uh, you, you are still wondering what is the meaning of this code. So let me show to you first, if you want to print the length of an array, you can use this length of len list name. So, okay, so the length is five. There are five names here, okay? So for i in range, okay, what is the meaning of range? Range will loop all of this name five times, okay? Because the length of the array is five, so it will loop this name five times, okay? And if we print the list name i with an index of i, you will come up with the same result here, okay? So, um, okay, I, I, have to, I have to remind to all of you because um, there, is, there is a certain convention in Python 
if you want to um, print the first um, the first value in an array, you you can call this maybe list name zero. Okay. So list name zero is the first value in the, in the array. And the last array is the minus one. So minus one is Andrew. <coughs> Actually, if you are learning MATLAB, um, uh, the, the first index is not zero, but one. But for Python, all index starts from zero. So zero, one, two, three, four. So the last array is four. Okay, and then um, I'm gonna I'm I'm going to discuss about uh, the if conditional or for looping. Okay, and then um, so here I would like to do something like um, for I'd like to check which name is not. Um, James, okay? So John, so if uh, John is not James, Matthew is not James, but James is James. So I would like to check whether a name is a name, okay? So we use another concept here, it's called the if conditional. It's, it's also the basic thing in programming, okay? Uh, so we can combine this for I in range, for the length of list name, okay? And then for this, if list name is James, okay? So if the name is James, so I will print his name is James, okay? But if not, so I print else, if not James, so I will print his name is not James. So you will guess in this array, which name will print his name is James and which one will print his name is not James, okay? So um, if we run this, you will see, okay, it's, pre it's it's correct here. So John, his name is not James. His name is not James. For James, it's James, not James, not James. So this I combine if and uh, if and for looping. So this is the conditional. So if you want to give an exception, uh, you have to start by uh, by using the the conditionals. Okay. So I uh, so started from this very very basic concept. I would like to visualize the data using this concept, okay? Why I would like to, I, I start from this thing. Look, we are in, in this data, we have a resistivity data, okay? This resistivity data, for many petrophysicists, they prefer to plot the resistivity data into a form of logarithmic plot, okay? So, um, for example, I would like to maybe um, resistivity log, resistivity logging, Resistivity log data, okay. So maybe I would like I will I will share you one picture of resistivity data that have um, this one, okay. So if we, if if you see this log, okay, maybe this one. If you see this log, the resistivity data, it is plotted not into a normal plot, but it's it is in resistivity. Oh, sorry, it's in logarithmic plot. So for this data, I would like to give an exception for this. Uh, for, so for this um, resistivity data, I would like to plot in a semi-log or semi-logarithmic plot. But for an, for other data, it's only the normal plot. Okay. So I will I will I will show you because it's quite um, maybe some of you don't understand already. So this um, we first to visualize as usual we use fig figure and 
And then the RT show. Okay, so, so I would like to make a subplot of this data. Okay, so um, I would like to show the data, uh, just, just five data, the neutron, density, gamma ray, resistivity, and the compressional uh, sonic law. Okay, and I would like to make uh, subplots of um, plots. Okay, um, if you still remember our previous session, we, are, we have been talking about how to make a subplots visualization using matplotlib. But instead of doing like this, plt.subplot all the times, okay? So for this five, so plt subplot five, two, and etc. until plt.subplot five, five, okay? So instead of doing this, we can use the for looping to automate our data. So because our, our topic here is effective Python programming, so it, I think it's, it's, it's an urge for me to share how you can effectively programming. Instead of using, using this, you can use the for looping to do things uh, much more simpler, okay? So for, uh, so for I in range, Learn, um, learn well, okay. Um, okay, so, um, okay, so there are five flocks here. So this is five, okay. Okay, so maybe I just skipped another step here. First, um, I would like to, uh, to define which column I would like to show, okay? So lock is NPHI. Gamma ray, S3 and the DTC, okay? So for I in range, and log, okay? print well dot log dot i okay so um, basically i would like to i would like to show um, the information in each so how can i say um, i would like to show one by one inside a list of names okay so well log uh, well, sorry, well dot mphi, okay. I hope you understand this, okay. So this one, um, well, uh, well, and mphi, it will print all the neutron data, okay. And then we have already defined our log. So here, in a range of five, because we have already, uh, we have five logs, okay. We use the plt.i plus one. And then plt dot plot. Um, okay, because for this, this is the recessivity data. As I said before, I would like to show this recessivity data into a semi log plot instead of normal plot. So I give an ex exception here. If uh, so, uh, you um, so if if log i equals recessivity, so we plot in semi-log, okay? So the way we are plotting the semi-log, we use semi-log x. And because we want to visualize um, the x-axis as our data and the y-axis is our depth, okay? So the x-axis, you define it first as the uh, well log i. And this one, the, the y-axis is depth, okay? And then for the other data, this data and this data, 
we just plot the normal, okay? So PLT, plot, well lock, I, and well, the depth, okay? Depth, yeah. So if we, if we run this code, you will see the data, okay? All the data, okay? And then uh, you can see that it is, it is, it's not quite a nice look of our data. I would like to give a distance between one plot and another. So we use this to make a, to make a distance. And I can use, um, I, can res I, can, I can change the size seven, nine, okay? So these are our locks, okay, perfect. And one thing you have to concern is that the depth is still, you have to make it from the shallower depth to the deeper depth. So this one should be on top of here, okay? So you have to reverse the y-axis. How I reverse the y-axis? Well, you can make a limit to your um, axis, the y-axis, and the, the axis is from, from uh, for example, from this 300 and 3,001 and 3,500 and 1,000. So from, so you place it here, it will give you an inverted depth, okay? And then I would like to make a grid to make it more um, perfect here. Okay, this is the grid. And if, uh, and if you want to, uh, if you want to plot in uh, different colors, you can define first um, the, um, the list of colors. For example, the first one is black, red, green, purple, and blue. Okay. So here, okay. So if you if you if you type, for example, red and color equals red. Okay it will give you all the plots showing in red, okay? But you want to define each data into different color. So instead of using red here, you again using the concept of for looping, okay? So color equals color because we have already had the list of colors. So color I, and this one is color I, okay? So it will print us the locks in a different color. And then I would like to give a title. And, and the title is different for each lock. And again, we are using the same for looping. So um, we define it as because for the first column, I would like to plot MPHI, etc. So the same syntax here, the plt, uh, sorry, it's uh, no. plt the title, this one, okay? All right, it's, it's, it's perfect. Okay, I think I would like to go to the chat feature, okay? Okay, so for this well of visualization, we have already covered on how to plot this log, okay? And see here, the recessivity is already in a semi-log plot, okay? So, um, okay. Um, okay, so this HOB, okay. We have already visualized our data, okay? And then the second thing is the wellbore the well trajectory, okay? Um, here, I have already um, had the, um, the, the data here. The data is from, from this one, the trajectory path. If you're going to this link, you will see the data.
So this is the data, okay? This is the data of the trajectory, the well trajectory, okay? So using the data, I would like to visualize a trajectory, okay? Because this this uh, this is the uh, this is the CSV file, so we use pandas, not placeio, to visualize this. Okay, so remember we use uh, what function we use for um, reading a CSV file. We use a panda dot read CSV. Okay, so we define first as trajectory df, and then panda reads read CSV trajectory path. Okay, and then if you um, visualize um, the data, okay? This is the data maybe uh, for the 10 first rows, use hand, okay? So this is our data. And um, so from this data, I would like to visualize the trajectory. So pay attention here, we have um, several data that we have to, to concern. First is the azimuth and the inclination. This data, uh, we are not going to visualize, okay? Because um, some, uh, because in, in, in its original format, the data is, is not complete as this. I have already prepared this data uh, for you. So I've already calculated using the, um, using, um, using the trajectory calculation. I calculated all this, uh, the, the, um, the, the, the coordinates. So it's been available for you. So originally you have or you have all, you have only azimuth and inclination, and you have to calculate from using minimum curvature method. I think you have already heard the term, the minimum curvature method to uh, to calculate this um, coordinates. And um, there are three, only three data that we uh, we visualize from this data. Uh, only the the depth, this is the true vertical depth. This is the x axis, the, uh, sorry, this is, uh, the, uh, this is the y axis, north, south, the y axis, and then the east, west is our x axis, okay? And then the TVD will be our z axis. Why we, why we, uh, we are not going to use this measure depth, why? I think you have already got the answer because Measure depth is not a true depth. If uh, when when someone is going to drill into formation, they are measuring the measured depth. It is not a true vertical depth. So you have to convert the measured depth to a true vertical depth. So in the y in the z axis, you will define the true vertical depth. Okay. And maybe, um, in, uh, maybe you will ask uh, when MD equals TVD, okay? MD equals TVD when the well is vertical, but when the well is not vertical, it's definite well or it's horizontal, the measured depth won't equal to TVD, okay? So we continue our discussion here. We visualize our data. So we have already uh, had the data. So first of all, we um, define the data. First, trajectory df, um, surf, east, west, values, y, trajectory df, surf, ms, dot values, and z is the trajectory df, um, TVD, okay, values, okay, plot the, uh, plot the trajectory, we have already defined the variables, then instead of using matplotlib to visualize a trajectory, I would like to show you how to use a plotly, plotly is a visualization library, it's another visualization library instead of using matplotlib, because plotly is offering us how to, um, how to plot in an interactive way, so I'm going to use Plotly now, okay? So um, first, use this figure, um, PX um, figure, so okay. First, 
we are going back to our very first um, here. So um, I forgot to import the plotly express as px, okay? So this is our library for visualization of trajectory. So first, figure px dot, um, so um, the function that we want, that we will use here is called the scatter tree, okay? The scatter 3D and um, okay. So the first input uh, is the data frame because here the name of our data frame it's, is trajectory data frame. So first trajectory data frame. The second input is the X value, okay? The X value is the column here, okay? So X equals this one. And then the Y axis is this one. And the third input is the TVD, okay? All right, okay, so, and then we, uh, we show um, the trajectory And um, it's still run. We have to wait for a couple of seconds. So voila, we have already obtained the result here. This is our trajectory, but it is, it is not uh, so beautiful. I can make a color here. So what is the difference between using Matplotlib and Plotly? Here, if we are using Matplotlib, we cannot, we cannot be interactive with our plot. We can, we can rotate this plot, okay? So we can rotate this plot. We can hover this. We can track this line. You can see all of the information here, okay? So, so, um, so Plotly is, is a really, really cool library to visualize our data because it's interactive. If we are using Matplotlib, we cannot do this thing. Okay, and one thing, again, we observe that the dev is not increasing in uh, increasing uh, so uh, from the shallower to deeper, okay? So it should be from 500 to 3000 at the bottom, okay? So we have to again reverse the Z axis. How to reverse the Z axis? So we use the figure update dot scene then c axis um, auto range reversed okay so it will reverse our plot okay so you notice now we have from 500 to 3000 at the bottom, okay? This has been already reversed, okay? And then I would like to, um, to make a color for every point here. So I would like to, um, to plot the inclination, okay? So we use the color C equals azimuth. Color equals azimuth. So we, we will look at the difference here, okay? So each point here, you can see the data from the azimuth, okay? So here, um, actually this is, this is really important uh, when, we, when we make a visualization um, we have to we have to make first our plot is beautiful, so that maybe our clients or our customers or any other people can understand the data our data, and they they can have an insight from our from our data. So because for us, so for example here we we can understand in which section of our wellbore plan or wellbore trajectory is having the highest azimuth. 
or highest incl inclination. So instead of maybe azimuth, we can also plot the inclination, okay? Okay, so this is the inclination from the zero, uh, so from the lower inclination to the higher inclination, okay? So yeah, we can, um, we can, um, we can zoom in and zoom out because it's quite interactive. You can track this trajectory. You can see the data, the inclination, the TVD, and, uh, and everything else, okay? Okay. Um, so maybe is there any question about this part? I will check. Okay. So maybe, um, so there, there are no questions for this wellbore trajectory visualization. So I think I'll go directly to the next part. So now we are going to discuss another new topic. Um, I believe that maybe I guess uh, there's still no course discussing about natural fracture analysis. And in this, uh, in this session is special because we are going to learn something new. We are going to visualize a natural fracture, okay? So what is a natural fracture? Well, natural fracture is, um, is, um, is, a, is a geological evidence or um, it's, it's caused by uh, fracturing by tectonics or by um, um, subduction process or any other process related to the sedimentation and uh, tectonics. And how to... Um, visualize or how to describe a natural fracture, okay? If you have already, I, I, I believe you have, uh, you have been, um, um, uh, you, have, you have already uh, got a geology class in your college, I believe so. So you are familiar with the terminology of strike and dip. If you are not, so I think I will share my slide. So, um, so this one, is the picture of a natural fracture, okay? So a natural fracture is described by two measures. The first measure is the strike angle and the second measure is the dip. The strike is basically a measure or a degree how far the degree is from the north, okay? So for example, um, the, uh, the fracture is, or is, is directed to the to the east, so you will um, your so your fractures your fracture is said to have a strike of ninety degree. Okay, so uh, for uh, if your if your fracture is directing to the south, so it will yeah you guess it will it will print uh, uh, you will describe it as uh, uh, one hundred and eighty degree to the south uh, to uh, to the south. Okay. And another measure is the dip. The dip is how steep a fracture is from the horizontal plane. So in this picture, this is the horizontal plane, and this is the orientation, the strike, and uh, the strike, and the dip is from uh, from the end from the end plane, and this. So this is B. B is the dip angle. Okay. So we always characterize fracture using strike and dip. Okay. Actually, there are other measures. For example, aperture. Aperture is um, is is how it's um, it's how big an open fracture. So you can measure um, several millimeters or several micrometers of the fracture in inside your rock. Okay. And how to visualize the strike and dip? In geology, we are using what is called as a stereo net. Okay. So in this topic, I would like to show how to visualize a natural fracture using a stereo net. So first of all, I load the data. Again, the data is, is in a CSV data. So we use the, uh, to uh, use the pandas read CSV, okay? Um, um, frac equals panda read CSV. And the fracture, because here, we have already had the link, the fracture. This is the link. So fracture path. 
Okay, so this is our data. We have this depth, strike, dip, the dip direction and the aperture. What is the difference between dip and dip direction? That's uh, it's another it's uh, it's another discussion. But anyway, uh, for this topic, we will we will discuss only for strike and dip. Okay, so there is also so an aperture, aperture is, is uh, I said before, how open uh, a fracture. This is four millimeter, five millimeter or seven millimeter. So here in this data, we, uh, we, uh, we have these two data, the strike and dip data, okay? And also the depth, okay? So from this data, we will visualize this data using a stereo net, okay? So what is a stereonet? Stereonet, well, stereonet is, um, um, is um, it's a stereographic projection plane, um, yeah, of a plane, yeah, uh, a stereographic projection from uh, of a plane to a plane. So actually that's, if, uh, if, I think it's, uh, it looks like complicated. So um, if you are analyzing, um, and analyzing a fracture, you can imagine it like a plane. So if you project a plane into another plane, but the projection uh, the projection is a stereographic. Uh, so you uh, you already known uh, lots of projections. For example, Cartesian, spherical, cylindrical projection, and we have uh, we also have a, what is called as a stereographic projection. So in the natural fractures, we use the stereographic to visualize. Our data. So, first we define the strike is the frac df um, strike. Okay, so this is this is a strike, and then this is the dip. So the frac df dip dot values. Okay. So this one is without DF. Okay. So um, to produce the stereo net, and another thing we'll, 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 we are going to discuss what is a Rose diagram. To produce a stereo net from a natural fracture data, I have already um, built a function in my GitHub. So I have already imported here. Uh, the, the function is called um, uh, the fracture. So if you see inside the fracture, as we have already done before, you will see two functions, the, uh, the stereo net and the rose diagram. So the first thing I would like to use the function that is called the stereo net. So stereo net and the, and the, and the inputs are only the strike and dip, okay? And if you run this code, Okay, so um, again, because we are using the library, so we have to define first what is our library, okay? So every time we use pandas, we use pd.readtsv or numpy array, np.array or plt.plot. So here uh, we have to use fracture.something, okay? So because we, we, uh, we want to use um, the stereo net function from our um, fracture library, so we use fracture.stereonet. Okay, if you run this code, you will see the stereonet of our fractures here. What this plot tells us, okay, so this, um, so this are our fractures. The blue lines are the strikes. The black dots here are our um, dips. And how to read this? Um, you have this from zero to 45 to 90, around to the 360. So you can see here from zero to, uh, to 45 or 60 degree, you can see the highest concentration of the strikes. So the strikes is oriented in this direction, okay? So you can, you can describe that the fracture has an orientation um, from, um, from zero to 45 degree to the east or, to, uh, or, nine, uh, or 60 degree to the east, okay? 
So this is our orientation of our fractures. Okay, so we are, if you are going back to our, uh, to our picture here, so A is the strike angle. So the strike angle is uh, from zero to 60 degree, okay? And the black dots here are the depths of the, of the fracture, okay? So how to read the dip from a stereo net here, we have an equal distribution of all the, um, of all the, of all the dips here. So if, if we see here, um, here from, from this to this, you can see that this line, the horizontal or the equatorial line is divided into several equal, um, equal, um, equal, equal sizes here, okay? So from this to this is um, 90 degrees. So this is um, zero, 10, um, zero, 10, 20, 30, blah, 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 until 90, okay? And if you see here, the dots are concentrated nearer to the 90 degree side. So zero to 90 degree. So uh, this is maybe the, this is um, 30 degree, 50 degree and um, um, 70 degree. And this one is the largest concentration. So it tells us that the dip of our fracture is somewhat around 80 or 90 degree. So we have here, maybe I would like, I will, I will write down here, the, um, um, the strike is from um, zero to 40 degree. And the dip of our factory is around 80 and 90 degree, okay? So only from this visualization, you can tell or you can describe the fracture that you are analyzing, okay? Actually, there are also other strikes here. If you see here, there are also other strikes. This one is um, the orientation of 180 degree, okay? So it's completely like a parallel, okay, to the north. Um, it's heading to the south, okay? So, um, yeah, so from this plot, you can tell everything about you uh, from your fracture. But also, you can, you, can, you can also visualize the strike of a fracture using what is called as a Rose diagram. Again, this is, this is, this is a terminology in the geology class. A uh, Rose diagram is another visualization of the strike. So if you want to uh, find out uh, what, is, what, is, uh, what is the most, um, what is the most um, dominant strike in our fracture, we can use the Rose diagram to visualize it, okay? So uh, how do we use the Rose diagram here is quite simple. We use fracture.rows. And the next thing is the strike, okay? The input is strike. And if you run this code, you will see this plot. This is the, this is the Rose diagram. So it tells us that uh, here, there, there, are, there, are, there are bars here, and the largest bar points to the 30 degree, okay? So it means that our fracture is oriented with uh, is oriented uh, closely to 30 degree. A, that's, that's really, uh, that's, that's, that's very close to our stereo net observation, yeah. Because um, here, um, um, if you see here, the distribution is more concentrated to the 30 degree, the strike is 30 degree. And again, if we are visualizing the Rose diagram, we, uh, we, we can see that the, the strike is also have the same value, okay? So if you are, maybe if, if you have a strike of um, 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 120, so the bar will be pointed to this direction, okay? So I hope that you understand this concept. Um, this, is the, uh, this, is, uh, this is how we interpret uh, the data using the steering net and um, Rose diagram, okay? Okay, so I think that's all for, for today. That's all for this session. Maybe I would like to summarize all that we have already covered so far here. So for, for this session, we, uh, we, have, uh, we have installed another new, new library. So it's called the LACIO and the MPL stereo net. LACIO is for visualizing the well logs and the MPL stereo net is for visualizing the, the fracture data. 
and also we are using the Plotly to uh, plot the trajectory data. And then, um, so this is this is the functions and this is the, the data. And then for the well of data, uh, here we are trying to find the data, the, the mnemonics of our data. And then we convert the data into a data frame. And then um, we are using the for loop to visualize all the data into subplots here. Don't forget to reverse or invert the y-axis because um, uh, it, it, should, it, it must start from the shallower to the deeper depth, okay? By using the PLT ylim from this to this, okay? And then don't forget, the, uh, there is also an important thing here. This is called how to make a, uh, to make a subplot using a for loop. So this, because we, uh, we, have, we, uh, we have five data, okay? We use, uh, we use five columns, okay? So um, uh, maybe you still remember how we described this, plt.subplot. The first input is the, the number of rows. The second input is the number of columns, okay? And this one is, uh, is where I place the plot. So for example, the MPHI is the first plot, so it will be one, two, three, four, and etc. okay? So if we have, for example, 10 logs, so we use one comma 10 comma i plus one, okay? For 12, one comma 12, and for 20, one comma 20 or, and so on, okay? And then we, um, we visualize the trajectory, okay? Here, the trajectory is visualized using Plotly, okay? Why we are using Plotly? Because it's, it's interactive. We can zoom in and zoom out and we can track, trace um, the trajectory. And we can also plot the colors from the data. Maybe we want to visualize the azimuth. So we can change this into azimuth. The color is azimuth. Maybe some other data, for example, the dog like severity. This is the term, another term in um, wellbore trajectory, the severity or the angle. So, um, so uh, we, can, we can also plot this data along the side. And also don't forget to revert or invert our axis using this. So to update the scenes using the, this reverse format, so we'll, we'll have this, okay? And then we have done the natural fracture analysis. Uh, we obtain this data and then uh, we have visualized using um, two ways. First is using SteerNet and another one is using the Ross diagram. And the most important thing is how to interpret from this data. This is the strike, the blue lines is a strike and the, and the, and the black dots here are the, um, uh, are the dips. And also I, I forgot to, to tell you that this is the heat map. So the red color um, tells us the, the most uh, dominant um, um, orientation of the dips in our fractures, okay? And then we also, we can also visualize using the rose diagram to tell us which direction is the most dominant in our fractures. Okay, so I think that's all. Um, um, I'm still open for questions. If you if you want to ask uh, questions for this session, um, you can start um, typing in the chat box. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Engineer Johannes. It was a great session, and I would like to thank you for your efforts. Actually, you have answered most of, most of the questions during the session, but we still have two more. Uh, first question, how can we apply artificial intelligence to find reservoir thickness? <laughs> yeah, actually, um, artificial intelligence and machine learning is, is, a, is a very, very um, sexy term nowadays. People, are, people, are, um, people always want to do something with uh, machine learning, with artificial intelligence, neural network, or something else. I would like to say that... Um, Instead of jumping into artificial intelligence and machine learning, we'd better to understand this thing from basics. Um, maybe for, for just for simple tasks, we don't have to use machine learning always, okay? For example, uh, we want to, uh, as you said, I want to find a reservoir thickness. 
I think reserve for thickness doesn't uh, doesn't uh, doesn't uh, really need machine learning or artificial intelligence. Why? We can use volumetric mapping, or we can use the well logging to find the pay zone, to find the pay thickness from the well log, and then to distribute it using a volumetric or any other method, for example, contouring or Kriging interpolation. Okay, so I think that's enough to 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 do some simple task using a just basic, just, just only basic methods we, we know in, uh, in, um, in engineering. And when we, we can use our artificial intelligence and machine learning. So we use this term when we come across a really, really complicated problems or, or a problem that maybe some other people cannot approach using a common engineering approach. So for example, I would like to, um, um, to characterize the lithology from the well of data, okay? Because as you know, the petrophysicists they spend lots of time to interpret the data, and then they uh, they will they uh, they will uh, they will produce the lithology classification using a certain certain kinds of uh, methods in petrophysics, using near term density plot and other plots in petrophysics. They are using this, and they will they can spend. Uh, for example, one or two weeks to produce this thing. But if we, if we use the artificial intelligence and machine learning, it will cut the interpretation time. Of, um, uh, for example, in one hour, we can, uh, we can also, uh, we can have a, we can have a really, uh, we can have a result in a really short time. Actually, the discussion on machine learning and artificial intelligence is it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of more interesting. I can open another another maybe another session or another podcast or talk about machine learning and artificial intelligence when we use it and when we don't use it. When we can, um, I think uh, when we uh, what thing we can do with machine learning and what thing we, we cannot do with machine learning. But I want to stress that um, the basic understanding in engineering is the most important thing before we are jumping to machine learning and artificial intelligence to do um, something in our uh, domain knowledge. I hope that great. answers the question. Yeah, great. Um, how to put each log range on the top of the plot? How to put each log range on top of the plot? Yeah. Oh. Okay, so um, I think you might refer to this plot here. This is this is actually the the range. This is this is the range of the f of the x-axis. So um, maybe I think you, uh, you you are referring to how we can constrain or how we can modify the range. For example, here for this data gamma ray data, I would uh, uh, you would like to. Um, visualize from zero to 200. So we can use this actually. Um, so maybe I can add some more codes here. For example, X min and X max, oh, sorry, X min and X max, okay? X min and X max. So for this, I make a list, okay? So pay attention here, we have five logs. So we have to, we have to define uh, five, uh, five range, okay? So we, we are going from first, for example, from NPHI from zero to 45 percent, okay? Because 45 is the highest porosity of all rocks, it's quite possible. So the X min and X max here for the first column is zero and the second one is 45. And then for the row B, for example, from, um, from two, to um, 2.7, and then from gamma ray, from um, zero to 200. And then for the resistivity, from zero to 100, okay? So because, uh, so because the semi-log plot cannot plot in the zero, because it, uh, so, 0.001 will be correct. And this one is uh, 100. And then the range for the compressional data, compressional sonic lock is from 50 to um, 150. So from 50 to 150. 
So we have already um, obtained this list. So we just type this plt.xlim, okay? And again, because we are working with the for loop, so we, uh, we, we again use the i. So uh, the x limit is from the x min, the x min i and the x max i, okay? And if you run the code, it will give you the new range of data here, okay? So you will see this from zero to uh, 0 0.45, and then this one from two. So, uh, so you can modify this range by, uh, by making this list from for, for each log, the minimum and the maximum limit of your x axis, okay? Okay, the last question. Is it possible to predict the fracture distribution for carbonate reservoir using Python? That's, um, um, I think, um, to predict fracture distribution for carbonate reservoir using Python. Um, we have to, um, we have to go back to, to, to the basic concept of what is the carbonate reservoir. So, if, if you still remember the difference between carbonate reservoir and, this, and the sandstone reservoir, or people call it as the silicic plastic reservoir, there is a major difference. For sandstone reservoir, you will see that the porosity is, is uniform, okay? So you will see only granular porosity, but in carbonate, you will, you will have lots of different kinds of porosity. For example, foggy porosity, moldic porosity or um, 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 fracture porosity and secondary porosity, primary porosity and dual porosity. There are lots of lots of porosity types in carbonate formation. And this is the use of, um, I think, um, the use of modern interpretation to, 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 to distribute the fracture inside the carbonate reservoir. And I would, I would like to say because I was working with carbonate reservoir several years ago, and it was quite complicated because carbonate reservoir is very different from the sandstone reservoir. The fracture behavior is really, really different. Um, um, the, um, uh, you, you, can have, you can have two kinds of porosity in one reservoir. For example, the buggy porosity with moldic porosity in, one, in just one reservoir. So it's quite complicated to, um, to, to characterize the fractures in our reservoir. But um, um, yeah, I think uh, you, can, you can use, uh, for example, the methods that, uh, that you, uh, you know in petrophysics, there are methods in how to characterize the dual porosity or triple porosity, and then you can code or you can make a program using Python. So yeah, I think, I think it's possible. And I would, I would like to say that every time people ask me, is it possible to do this with Python? Is it possible to characterize something? Or is it possible to, to, um, to achieve this result using Python? I would say yes, because you can do anything with Python and um, you can solve any problem with Python. The only thing that you, uh, you, that you, that you, have, to, that you have to do and you have to have is the urge to have a creativity. So um, um, creativity makes uh, lots of lots of interesting things. You can make even what people don't realize before and what people don't, don't make it before, you can make it yourself, okay? So I think the, uh, all, all, all things are really, really possible in Python. You can do anything with Python and not only Python, but also any programming language, for example, MATLAB or C++ or any programming language that you prefer, you can make all things with programming language because I think programming language is more preferable than spreadsheet. In, uh, if, you, if you are working with Excel spreadsheet, it is quite limited. We are working with tables that is in natural, uh, uh, we cannot modify, we cannot easily make our own program, but we, if we know how to program something, we can translate our problem into codes and then from codes into another new program. So I think all things are possible in Python and yes, you can 
characterize fracture in the carbonate reservoir using Python. Yeah. That's all for today. Thank you, Engineer Johannes, and thank you all. The session will be uploaded to PyoPetri YouTube channel, and don't forget to, so to solve the quest on Google Classroom. Best of luck, and thank you again.